is Abdul Rahman. I'm a lecturer at a public university in Kenya. I deliver lectures in computing and informatics. In our last lesson, we talked about introduction to Java programming. And into that particular session, basically, we discussed an outline how we're going to conduct all our lectures until the end. We discussed uh, actually what are the basic of Java, what are the condition and the loops of Java programming, we discuss what are the inbuilt function for a string, we discuss what are the object oriented programming concept, what are what you call up memory management in Java, and then we discuss about the exception handling, file handling, a Java collection, enum, uh, uh, enum uh, rejects and annotation. Today we are going to start on another uh, topic and ask ourselves what is the Java virtual machine and into that particular journey we are going to discuss Java versus C compilation and then we are going to discuss JVM or Java virtual machine and then we are going finally to finish up with what you call just-in-time compilation or GIT compilation. So let us start on that particular journey and see what has happened. In our previous videos, as we all understand, we talked about how uh, C programming actually was compiled. So for example, if we have uh, um, the main method here, and in that particular main method, basically we've got up maybe a function one, and what you call a function 2. So in this particular main method, we want to see how it's going to be compiled. So for example, if this main method, actually it is file 1.c and this function, it is actually file 2.c and this is file 3.c then what happens these three uh, these three files are basically going to be compiled these three files are going to be compiled so we'll have these three files are going actually to be compiled here And then after being compiled, they are going to be actually the output of it will have file one dot object file, and then we'll have our file two dot object file, and then we'll have our file three dot object file. So we'll have all these three files dot object being compiled into that, and then all these particular three files are going to be linked. So here I will have up a linker. So all of them, they are going to be linked and they are going to be linked into file.exe. And the file.exe basically is going to be loaded into a RAM. So we'll have up our RAM here in the CPU they are going to be loaded into a RAM for execution. So this is basically what will happen in C programming. Let's see what will happen in Java programming. In Java programming, basically, we are going to have up the same, but on a different manner. If you have the same files, so these particular files that we have of, uh, our main and two function, and maybe this particular files now in this particular area now we'll have file1.java and then we'll have our file2.java and our file3.java so these three particular files also they are going actually to be compiled So when they are going actually to be compiled, 
at this time they are not going to be compiled into file.object but they are going to be compiled into file.class so it will be file1 file2.class and file3.class now the unique thing about the dot class it is that uh, actually the dot class contains what you call the bytecode so they contains the bytecode and this particular bytecode actually it is easier to be converted uh, into machine language so the bytecode and then this particular uh, dot class files they are taken and uh, uh, into what you call a class loader so we have what you call a class loader and basically they are not actually linked but they are uploaded using a, a class loader into memory they are uploaded into memory that is into RAM and inside a RAM here uh, they are actually uploaded here using up our class mode, our class loader so basically this is actually the process however the inside the RAM inside the RAM uh, basically we have uh, uh, what you call the JVM so inside the RAM here we've got the JVM so JVM actually that is Java uh, virtual machine is inside the RAM and actually it will contain the class loader and also it will actually contain what you call bytecode verifier so here we'll have what you call the bytecode verifier and the bytecode verifier actually will verify the bytecode uh, to make them safe and then finally inside the JVM uh, which is inside the RAM we are going to have what you call the uh, execution engine and the execution engine is the one going actually to do the compilation and generate uh, uh, our, our system so that is very important to understand but however let's see how why do we have a, a, a JVM so within a JVM we know that right, that when we write up code we have different types uh, of uh, computer architect or operating system let's take for example we have written this our code of ours here and then uh, we have maybe let's say a mac machine so here you have mac and here maybe we have linux And here maybe we have a Windows machine so these are the machines we're having or also we can have an Android machine so for us to write up a code uh, basically for each and every machine if you do a compilation we write up our code we have to write up a code for different operating system because they have what you call here an API and this particular API or application uh, program interface for each and every machine they are different so different API for different APA machine so the problem here we are having it is uh, actually to have a, a writing up a code for each and every operating machine and this is where actually uh, we have the uh, JVM JVM now it is another layer which stays between this particular code and uh, the operating machine so we can have so many JVM for each and every operating system while having up the same code so this brings us to uh, uh, being the code written in Java because of JVM to be actually independent so that is very very important to understand that
That is why we are having up our code to be independent because of JVM. JVM will actually, uh, a Java virtual machine will have the same code communicating with different type of operating system. Instead of, if we didn't have a JVM, it means you have to write code for each and every operating system. So basically, that is actually how, uh, how it works. So let's see now uh, what is uh, the strategy of uh, uh, just-in-time compilation. So compilation processes, basically comp uh, when we do compilation, we can use either a compiler or we can use what you call an interpreter. A compiler actually it is very fast compared to an interpreter which is actually uh, very slow. But uh, however, uh, a compiler being fast, it is actually uh, platform dependent. As opposed to an interpreter, it is actually platform independent. Now, the JVM, actually, the JVM has, uh, uh, in Java, has got both the compiler and the interpreter. So it has taken up uh, both properties of a compiler and interpreter. And that is why sometimes you see a Java becoming up a, a, a bit slower or in between onto that. However, they have found out an interpreter actually when it interprets or do the compilation, it does line by line. And if that particular line comes up again, it does again line by line. And this it is actually wasting up a lot of time. So they've come up with uh, another strategy, which they call it just in time. And this just in time strategy, basically, uh, it has got two main features. One feature, it is actually to address this particular one, uh, uh, the interpreter. So what will happen it is, when we have a repeated code, it is just actually run only once and actually stored into memory. And uh, when also uh, 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 we have uh, a code that it is not used, so if you have a code uh, not used, it is actually eliminated in order to increase the efficiency or optimized. So it actually used to optimize uh, uh, our code. So this particular two strategies whereby all repeated uh, uh, functions or repeated instructions are actually done only once and store in memory. And if you have got uh, uh, any code which is not being used then it is actually eliminated to optimize code is what we call up a strategy of JTI just in time compilation. So the just in time compilation make actually JVM compilation to become up faster. So basically this is uh, what we want to discuss about what is actually the Java virtual machine. So basically Java uh, a virtual machine resides uh, on top of uh, our program in order to uh, in order to make it easier for us to uh, code into different operating systems as opposed if you are going to use other languages uh, like C or PAL which actually uses interpret uh, interpre interpreter alone or compiler alone whereby it doesn't have that particular uh, advantage. So that it is actually the end of this particular session. Into our next session, we are going to talk about the IDE, that is Integrated Development 
environment, how and where do we write up our code and uh, execute our code in Java. Thank you for listening. Until next time, I say bye.